From the Cronkite Studios in downtown Phoenix, this is Cronkite News. Democratic vice presidential nominee Tim Kaine is in Phoenix today. What he had to say to Latino voters in his all-Spanish rally. And why long lines at the polls are not a thing of the past. Plus, how these high school students are getting involved with the election and encouraging people to vote. Cronkite News starts now. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. I'm Danielle Kernkamp. And I'm Veronica Acosta. Thank you for joining us. Democratic Vice Presidential nominee Tim Kaine was campaigning in Phoenix today, where he held a rally completely in Spanish. Carla Liriano is at the Maryville Community Center where Kane addressed Latino voters. Carla? I'm at the Maryville Community Center in Phoenix where Tim Kane just delivered the first ever campaign speech entirely in Spanish. Now, Kane really hit hard on the Democratic Ticket's plan for immigration reform and their vision to revive Latinos in the economy through education. We're going to make sure that community education centers are free. We are going to assure, ensure that attending state university does not entail taking out a loan. And for families who earn less than $125,000 a year, we will do away with tuition completely in those schools. Kane was working hard to rally the Hispanic vote. The crowd here was largely Hispanic, and they were energized and engaged, often shouting out cheers in Spanish. And much like Clinton at her event yesterday, Kane encouraged early voting and high turnout from Arizona Latinos. In Phoenix, Carla Liriano, Cronkite News. Last night, a career politician wearing a royal blue pantsuit made her pitch to thousands of Arizonans to vote blue next week. Cronkite News reporter Katie Beery covered Democratic presidential nominee Hillary Clinton's rally at ASU from the morning soundcheck to the evening security sweep. Hello, Arizona! Hillary Clinton hit the stage in Tempe with time ticking toward Tuesday. She was joined by prominent state Democrats like Phoenix Mayor Greg Stanton, who attempted to paint a negative picture of the Republican nominee. The Arizona we know rejects hatred. We stand up to schoolyard bullies. A few other supporters also took the stage. Speaking is difficult for me, but come January, I want to say these two words, Madam President. Even though the former U.S. Secretary of State was more than two hours late to her rally, many who attended walked away with plans to vote for the candidate. She speaks a lot about diversity and first-generation students. She just wants to help everybody. She doesn't discriminate. Among Hillary Clinton's promises to this large group of millennials and Arizona students in Tempe was more affordable college education. This was her first rally in Arizona since accepting the Democratic presidential nomination in July. I think it's time you had a new sheriff in town, don't you? Clinton also ripped on Sheriff Joe Arpaio. And with only moments to election day, she had one final question. Are you ready to vote? In Tempe, Katie Beery, Cronkite News. While the Clinton campaign appeared optimistic last night, recent polls show the candidate still trails behind Trump in Arizona. It's estimated that more than 10,000 voters filled last night's field and stands in anticipation of Election Day. Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump is campaigning in Florida today, but his wife Melania Trump made her first campaign trail speech in Pennsylvania. The potential first lady focused on social media communication and cyberbullying. We have to find a better way to talk to each other, to disagree with each other, to respect each other. We must find better ways to honor and support the basic goodness of our children, especially in social media. It will be one of the main focuses of my work if I'm privileged enough to become your first lady. Melania Trump added that with social media, we need to teach children kindness, honesty, and respect. 
A federal appeals court is reconsidering an early ballot case in Arizona. The previous panel refused to block a new Arizona law that makes it a felony to collect early ballots from voters. The Court of Appeals is assigning an 11-judge panel to reconsider the case. More Arizona voters continue to submit their ballots early for this year's election. The latest numbers show a little more than one and a half million ballots have been mailed so far statewide. According to the Secretary of State's office, as of today, early voting accounts for 55 percent of the total number of ballots they will estimate will be cast in this election. Also today, the Assistant Director of Elections revealed that the median age of Arizona's early voters is 60. Long lines appeared yet again in the valley as many citizens turned out to vote. Kate Pfeiffer spoke to frustrated voters in Chandler. Another early voting day? And it's like pulling teeth here. It's, uh, it's really crazy. Another day of long lines. At Chandler City Hall this morning, lines went from a little over an hour to over two hours long with more people filing behind. Walter Natsik dropped his wife off an hour ago and says Chandler officials should bring in additional equipment to alleviate the lines. The line is probably close to 100 feet long and she moved about eight or nine feet in the past hour. Cleveland Jones has been in line for a little over 20 minutes, but said lines of two hours or more suppress the vote and reduce voter count. People come here for lunch and they or quickly and they want to do their their duty and they can't. There is a slight breeze, but the sun is beaming down on voters. Chandler officials and security have been passing out waters and are taking the elderly to the front of the line. One printer provided by Maricopa County is available to print out individual ballots and is the reason for this growing queue. And the voter reaction is clear. That's crazy. In Chandler, Kate Pfeiffer, Cronkite News. We reached out to the Maricopa County Recorder's Office but did not receive a response. Cronkite News is part of a nationwide effort to monitor reports of voting issues and election fraud. On Election Day, we will host an Election Land Bureau, partnering with groups like ProPublica and Google News Lab to cover voting rights and irregularities in election 2016. And be sure to join us next Tuesday for live election night coverage. Cronkite News will bring you election updates right here during our regular 5 p.m. newscast and will then be live on Arizona PBS 8.3 at 8 for the latest results and reactions from across the state. It's one week until Veterans Day. And Senator John McCain is celebrating early. Coming up on Cronkite News, what the Vietnam vets said in honor of other Arizona veterans. Plus, what opposing sides say Prop 206 will do to the economy if it passes. Election Day 2016, the historic end to a long campaign. Who will voters elect as the next president of the United States? Which party will control Congress? What else will we learn from the voters? Join PBS NewsHour for special election night coverage. Analysis you won't find anywhere else. Tuesday, November 8th on Arizona PBS. One week from tomorrow is Veterans Day. Senator John McCain started the holiday early, attending a ceremony to honor the Phoenix Veterans Day Parade Grand Marshals and service men and women. Alexa Stukrath is live to tell us more about the event. Alexa? APS CEO Senator John McCain and many veterans spoke about the Veterans Day Parade, about providing jobs for veterans, and about giving thanks to all those who have served. While well, thanking veterans for their service is great, today people were encouraged to take that one step further. Don't just thank a vet, hire a vet. 
Many men and women who served spoke about what it means to them to have served and then come home to try to find work. We have organizations now that uh, go out and help and motivate them to get jobs. We really appreciate that. Senator John McCain shared his concern over the high suicide rate for vets. Today, 22 veterans will commit suicide somewhere in America. 8,000 veterans will commit suicide this year. And there's two problems that we see that are prime reasons for this tragedy, this ongoing tragedy. The speakers all talked about why it is important to make sure that veterans are hired. We have a, an obligation to provide employment for those that have served our country with such valor. And why it is important to celebrate veterans. Something that you are, did beyond your normal duty. You go out and uh, when you sign up, you sign up to give your life as necessary. Because we have such great experience hiring vets. And so uh, we like to lead the way. Uh, there's nothing about being first, but maybe set an example. This event wasn't all serious. John McCain poked fun at the different branches of the military. By the way, I forgot to mention uh, thanking all of our veterans, uh, except for the Marines. And some speakers were even brought to tears. But this is who we are. This is who we all are. We carry this American flag and we stand for it when others will not because we are people of service. This was an event of celebration, giving thanks and honoring those who have served. The parade will be held one week from tomorrow, Friday, November 11th from 11 to 1 along Central Avenue from Bethany Home Road, then east on Camelback up to 7th Street. In Phoenix, Alexis Stukrath, Cronkite News. Another issue for Arizona voters, Prop 206. Prop 206 proposes an increase in Arizona's minimum wage from $8.05 to $10 in 2017 and $12 by 2020. If passed on Tuesday, what effect would this increase have on the state's economy? I think it only has positive effects on the economy. We see that from uh, cities and communities and states that have passed similar laws across the country. Samuel Richards, the executive director for Protecting Arizona's Family Coalition, says Prop 206 would really help single-parent families. But the policy director for Americans for Prosperity says the proposition actually harms those it intends to help. The actual facts and the economic policy is terrible for the people who are trying to get up, get advanced, and move up from that minimum wage job. The increase could also affect consumers. According to an analysis by the Joint Legislative Budget Committee, some businesses may have to increase their prices or suffer the loss in profits. It will increase prices because the people who are going to have to manage the extra cost of labor are small businesses and other businesses that hire people at a minimum wage. The analysis also says the increase would directly benefit the 700,000 workers in Arizona who make less than $12 an hour. The reality is, is this is good for the economy. We'll have fewer people relying on the government for their sustainability when you can earn your living, when you can earn a living wage. About 180,000 workers in Arizona make less than $8.80 an hour. Another 250,000 make less than 10. In response to Volkswagen's emissions cheating settlement, a high number of eligible car owners are signing up and submitting claims for a buyback or fix. A Volkswagen attorney says more than 370,000 people have registered on the settlement website and nearly 200,000 have submitted claims. The settlement deal was approved last week and covers about 475,000 Volkswagen and Audi vehicle owners selling back or fixing their cars while receiving an additional $5,100 to $10,000 each. Passion in politics can start at an early age. So early that high school students who can't even vote still have interest. Coming up on Cronkite News, the stories these students have and how they're using them to encourage people to vote. We got showers across the valley. How long will those showers stick around and will it impact your morning commute? I have the answer coming up next. One, two, three, four, five. I'm always searching to feel like I fit into something. We are the people that we are because of our past. I'm just one of many who's stopping silent. It's just proof of how far we have come.
make sure in all the hustle and bustle, we don't lose sight of why we're here. It all boils down to communicating the lives we live. If you look closely, they've got a story to tell. It connects with you in a very deep way. We wish you love, peace, and so Come with us on this great adventure. ideas open up a whole new world of possibilities. The more you know about history, the more you know about yourself. The sky is the limit. A group of high school students in the Valley are doing more than just sitting around and waiting to turn 18 to vote. They're getting involved now to make their voices heard outside of the polls. Instead of going straight home after school, students who volunteer at Case Action AZ get the word out to vote. So we've been able to mobilize, uh, I believe, more than 200 high school students um, so far this year to go out uh, in the summer, right, and currently, you know, in the fall to go out and talk to voters. Case Action AZ is a racially diverse organization made up of high school students who go into the community. Many have dealt with what they feel is racial bias and are especially vocal about defeating Maricopa Sheriff Joe Arpaio and Donald Trump. I feel like others should vote and to see that we're not able to vote, like that should like make them, you know, think, oh, if they're not able to vote and they're doing something and I'm able to vote, like I should be doing something too. Most of these high schoolers have been a part of Case Action AZ for a couple of months and say they find the motivation to be a part of the organization in different places. The person who inspired me was my grandma and showed me like, you should do it. Like regardless, if you're young, you still have a voice and you still can commit to something and still make a change. The students who volunteer do different things, including telling their stories of immigration issues through pictures and videos. So we go door to door, um, talking to voters and making sure that they're informed on what's going on and making sure people have a plan to go vote this election. Even though most of the students aren't 18 and therefore won't be able to vote in this election, they continue their fight in trying to make a change. If you look at any like historic moments in history, it hasn't been like a mayor or uh, a congressman, a single person who's made a difference or a change, it's been students. As for Luz Bretado, she says the first thing she's doing when she turns 18 is going out and registering to vote. We are dealing with some rain across the valley this evening. Tyler Klaus joins us to tell us how long the rain could last. Right now we're seeing a lot of rain move through the valley. It's pretty heavy rain as you can see across the valley. Over the past two hours it's really come up from Casa Grande up to Phoenix. As we turn on the lightning it had some very heavy lightning strikes down in Casa Grande. Now up here in Phoenix there's not as much lightning as we take a look at how much we have. As you can see we have about eight lightning strikes in the past hour here in Phoenix but the main threat with this storm is heavy winds. There's actually about a couple thousand people without power southeast of the valley and in Tempe area. As we take a look at the precipitation over the last couple hours down in Casa Grande is where they've seen the most because that's where it's been raining the most. There's been about a 0.7 to an inch of rain down in Casa Grande. As that storm moves through Phoenix, we will see about that same amount of rainfall. So before this is all over, we could see about an inch of rain here in Phoenix. As we move through temperatures right now, as you can see, you really tell where the rain's been. It draws this line up to the northeast. It's 63 degrees in Chandler and up where it hasn't rained, 75 degrees up in Surprise. As we work through the next couple of hours, that rain sticks around. Here's 9 p.m. tonight. You got spot showers all the way across the Valley. The heaviest rain is down near Tucson though. Working overnight, we pretty much clear up waking up tomorrow morning. We're dry here in the valley. Pretty good uh, morning commute. As we go through Friday though, we get this monsoonal flow back that we see in the summer with spot storms across the mountains. We have a 10% chance of rain Friday evening. Working through Friday night, all that rain moves off into New Mexico and we stay dry Friday night. Taking a look at your weekend forecast, 83 degrees with sunny skies on Saturday, 85 degrees on Sunday. Getting above, back above average with 89 degrees on Tuesday and 88 degrees on Wednesday. Tyler Klaus, Cronkite Weather. 
A planned test project to put sensors on freeways to detect wrongway drivers remains in the design phase. ADOT announced the project last year and now says that construction to install the system should begin in 2017. The system will use sensors to detect a wrongway driver. It would then send alerts to state troopers, post warnings on overhead message boards, and keep on-ramp traffic lights red. According to the CDC, one out of every four women in the country have experienced domestic violence. Immigrant women face additional challenges getting help. Some qualify for a special visa for victims of violence. This year, the U.S. government approved more than 17,000 of those visas. Cronkite News reporter Yami Flores talked to a Phoenix woman who hopes to qualify. Ana Leon is building a new life in Phoenix with her five children far from the violence they experienced in Sonora, Mexico. The children arrived with psychological problems, traumatized. Leon says the two youngest children had been taken by force by their father. She did not see them for more than a year. Once she tracked them down, I quickly took them all and ran to the border. They crossed in June with just their clothes on their backs. Two of my children were born here. That's why I asked for help in the U.S. I knew if I stayed in Mexico, their dad would have taken them again. Leon found help here at De Colores, a shelter for victims of domestic violence. This is one of the rooms offered by De Colores for their program called Crisis, which provides food, clothing, hygiene products, and a transition to a new life. So a lot of times the abusers either have residency or citizenship and the, uh, the women don't. So the abuser holds that against them and says, I'm going to report you. I'm going to have you deported. So that's a form of control. Some immigrant women who arrived at De Colores may qualify for a U visa. The special visa is for victims of certain crimes who have suffered abuse and are helpful to law enforcement investigating criminal activity. Me siento I feel very proud of myself for giving my children a better life and being able to do it on my own. Leon applied for a visa and is waiting for an answer. In the meantime, she's sharing her story to encourage other victims to seek help. Yemi Flores, Cronkite News. After 108 years, the Chicago Cubs finally got their World Series title. Coming up on Cronkite News. <laughs> why this championship is so important to Arizona Cubs fans. The confidence to lead our country. This isn't reality television. I feel like Hamilton reached out from history and wouldn't let me go until I told his story. I make no apology for my actions. I would do the same again. How we come so far and yet have so far to go. Right there, coming up. In 1920s Melbourne... Careful with the hand luggage. My pistol's in there somewhere and it may still be loaded. Phryne Fisher is a detective. Things could get interesting around here. Thought they already were. Who isn't afraid to live a little. I hope you're not concealing a dangerous weapon under that skirt. I'm concealing a lot of things. Why do you think you could just run off on your own? Because I'm carrying a gun. The irresistible series, Miss Fisher's Murder Mysteries. Saturday night at 10 on Arizona PBS. Hi, I'm Charlie Rose. As part of the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communication at ASU, Arizona PBS is providing a state-of-the-art venue for the next generation of journalists. From newsrooms in Washington, Los Angeles, and here in Phoenix, students engage in real-time, real-world news reporting, broadcast production, and online innovation. The Cronkite School and Arizona PBS working together in new ways to bridge the classroom to the community in the digital age. The Major League Baseball season ended last night with Game 7 of the World Series between the Chicago Cubs and Cleveland Indians. One Valley Sports Bar has become a second home for Cubs fans, and their party rocked into the night after their team's thrilling victory. Let's go Cubs! Cubs fans flocked to Half Moon Windy City Sports Grill in Phoenix throughout the playoffs. Wednesday was no different. Co-owner Clay Moizo, who moved to the Valley from Chicago, said about 400 people packed the place for Game 7 of the World Series. Many of them Chicago transplants, they prayed to see an end to a 108-year drought. 
My grandmother's 95 years old, and to think about the fact that as long as she's been around, she's never seen it, 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 it blows your mind. Therese Cobian, who lives in Desert Ridge, moved to the Valley in 2000. During the game, she had a hard time containing her excitement. I let myself for the first time feel that this could really be, this could happen, and it just brought tears to my eyes. It took 10 innings, eight runs, and one rain delay, but the Chicago Cubs finally got what they've waited 108 years for, a World Series title. In Once it was all over, champagne was popped and sprayed while the Cubbies rejoiced. Dream come true right here tonight. Dream come true, dream come true. Cubs fans don't think it will take another century to get back to this celebratory moment. But if it does, they say this moment will last a lifetime. Doesn't matter if it takes another 108, I'm gonna be dead. That's what matters, we had this year. 2016 was our year. In Phoenix, Alex Capriello, Cronkite News. Cronkite News is proud to be the news division of Arizona PBS. Here's what's coming up on Arizona Horizon and PBS NewsHour. On the next Arizona Horizon, we'll take a look at how Hispanic voting might impact the election in Arizona. And we'll hear about a program to create citizen scientists. That's on the next Arizona Horizon. I'm Judy Woodruff on the next news hour, making sense of the Trump brand and the Republican candidate's business record. That's Thursday on the PBS News Hour. That's it for Cronkite News tonight. Thanks for joining us. For top Arizona stories anytime, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org.